no, 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 no. Oh, no. If I tell you I'm good, probably you will say I'm false. But if I tell you I'm no good, you know one line. <laughs> Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Dr. PGNG. And praise God to get money back for another YouTube video. Banger, man. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I know what time it is. The doctor's in the house, man. So check this out, man. In the interim between the last time we seen Better Be and Bivol face off and, and to where we're at now, we're approaching the fight with like about a month left to the to the phenomenal showdown between the light heavyweight uh, uh, champions, right? And Archer Better Be and Dimitri Bivol for the undisputed championship of the world of the light heavyweight division. You know, uh, before that clash happened, you know, some people have caught up with, with Better Be Ev, And they asked him some questions about his, uh, you know, what his plans are potentially after beating Bivol, you know. After this challenge, how long do you want to stay in the sport for? Is this your final challenge or do you want to keep going? Challenges, maybe different categories different categories like you know yeah. go, go up um, we'll see and as you can see what they asked him here man is very interesting you know what i'm saying and uh people are saying oh man they're speculating is he looking past bivol right <laughs> is he looking past bivol or oh, um um is he is he challenging jay apataya you know say or any other cruiserweight champion you know me personally man i like to look beyond that and I'm, just, I'm just excited that he's not contemplating retirement you know what i'm saying because he is approaching 40. damn I'm sorry. Right, he's 39 years old, a few months off from 40. I believe his birthday's in January. And, um, you know, he's, he's pretty he pretty much had an injury riddled uh, last few years, right, from, from most recently tearing his meniscus. And then, you know, he had a jaw injury. You know what I'm saying? Hurt his jaw. No, did he? Um, and so now, uh, a jaw infection, rather. And then so now he's recovering off his meniscus because his fight would have happened earlier in June between him and Bivol, to which Bivol had a replacement against Malik Zanad. He, he stopped him in impressive fashion. And then now, uh, you know, better be of his... Um, going to be fighting him and of course Bivol tries to outbox you right that's what he does not tries that's what he does very well and so we expect him to try to take advantage of that knee you know what I'm saying see how mo how mobile that knee is you know but better be as like hey you know I think that I um, mean even in this interview as you can see what he said man he's like bro I'm not focused on any of that you know uh, but but that could be a possibility I could potentially move up because my job here at light heavyweight division once I get undisputed is essentially done and I agree with him you know um so when they asked him about the cruiserweight you know because he's the interviewee a respectful interviewee, um, he's going to address the questions that are presented by the interviewer. But I don't think that he's looking past Bivol, and I don't think that he's directly challenging anybody at Cruiserweight, but he's just letting you know that, yeah, man, if I conquer the heavyweight, the light heavyweight division, which is what essentially getting undisputed is, that's essentially what it means, and I think he's like, yeah, man, I could potentially move up and go to Cruiserweight, man, and I think that'd be a great fight, but he has to get past Bivol, and man, that's a tough fight right there, man. I think it's a 50-50 fight on paper. I'm not sure if we'll actually be uh, uh, that close in the ring, I think somebody may or may not get dominated, and it may or may not be better be ever, or may or may not be Bivol. That's why this fight's so exciting because I could see Bivol putting on a master class of boxing and out out out, out boxing and out classing uh, better be ever. But yeah. I could also see better be ever potentially going in there, applying that pressure and steamrolling Bivol. You know, and he'll be another victim. Yeah. But I will say this though, you know, it's interesting because. Uh, we we see that we don't we don't we don't um, look at Bivol as a devastating puncher or a big puncher at all. But you know he stopped his last opponent. You know and and better be if he's been dropped twice. That's a fact, ain't it? Ain't it? I did. You know once by Jeff Page Jr. Another time by Callum Johnson. So it's not like he's just some some impregnable impenetrable uh, uh, fortress. You know he can be he can be hit and and he can be hit well. You know now can Dimitri Bivol do it? I don't know. And we have seen Dimitri Bivol get staggered before too. And we know that for sure with a tw with a with a 100% KO ratio that better BF has. And, you know, if he gets touched, man, hey, he could get staggered or dropped. You know, he could get staggered again or even dropped. So I think it's a great fight. Uh, I would love to see better BF, um, if he beats Bivol, move on, you know, as opposed to retire because I, I thought that was an option, you know. Um, <clears throat> and if he loses, if he retires, that's cool too. But even if he loses, he could still fight a lot of people at light heavyweight. You know, Dave Morel, Dave Benavidez just most recently moved up. Still got Joshua Boatsy who'll be fighting Willie Hutchison. So there's some people, you know, you have upcoming like up and coming like Ben Whitaker. You know, you still, you know, there's, there's there's some other people there, man. You still got live dogs like Anthony Yard. And and then if Bivol loses, we know he's only 33 years old, so he's going to keep moving forward as well, man. So this this fight is great. Has a lot of stakes uh, uh, um, attached to it. You know, like light heavyweight 
supremacy and we'll see how it goes but who do you think is going to win better be of a bivol and if better be of wins do you think that he could beat jay Pataya and the other champions at um at cruiserweight i think he could um especially with jay Pataya. you know he had that rematch his last fight was against marriage bradis who just recently retired even though he he won again by unanimous decision um it wasn't as impressive as we were hoping right especially being a rematch so you know i think he i think he could beat every cruiserweight right now like zerdo who already lost to bivol and um Chris William Smith, you know, I definitely see better be being able to beat all those guys there. Um, but it'll be interesting, you know, moving up. Now, Bivol, if, if the case that Bivol wins, I could see him staying at light heavyweight and just handling business. I don't really see him foresee him moving up to cruiserweight, but hey, I wouldn't doubt his uh, his capability is either. So y'all let me know what y'all think about that in the comments, man. Appreciate y'all rocking me as always. And the reason, let me tell you this too. The reason why I know this is an older venue interview, the interview is not recent, is because if you notice, he has on the same exact clothes that he had on during the face-off with Bivol. So that'll let you know. <laughs> I mean, I'll Unless, unless, unless we run the reruns with the clothes, you know what I'm talking about, my boy, my boy, better be, it might be, you know, I'm talking about recycling them joints, you know, uh, but I, I don't think so, you know, um, so I think that what he's doing is, I mean, that interview was, 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 uh, for sure around the same time as a face off. So it's not a recent interview, but I just thought it was interesting that he, uh, he contemplated moving up to a cruiserweight potentially, man. So we could see a cruiserweight better be if depends on how this fight with Bivol goes, man. But I appreciate y'all rocking me as always. Remember with God, we do anything without God or nothing. The doctor's out. Peace. From the hood to college, both worlds they had to meet. Six degrees between us, so cold we're about to freeze. But we're Florida boys, hot takes, we bring the heat. We're moving the culture, the engineers to the streets.